Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. I'm so excited because we have the most fabulous Alyssa Riley here. Alyssa, welcome. Welcome. So as you guys know, Alyssa is from our favorite TV shows, Big Brother and Amazing Race. So I'm so happy to have you here today. Fun fact, Alyssa and I have actually known each other for what 10 years almost or probably uh, have been at least yeah like 20 yeah so like 15 years oh my god wow mm -hmm. Fun. okay so Alyssa and I new apartment in Charlotte right oh my god let me tell her so Alyssa and I have known each other got 10 10 plus 10 15 years almost and we okay. both started <laughs> I think we both met each other as hairstylists back in Cornelius, North Carolina, in some like university area, something like that. I, it's so long ago. Like, I just know that I met you through Caroline. I knew you were fabulous then and you are actually fabulous now. So I think this is so cool that we can both come on here today and talk just about like, like life then, life now, what's been going on and just like. A, how did we both end up on reality shows? And B, like, how are we handling this? Okay. So welcome, Melissa. Thanks for having me. Oh super, super fun to be here. I wish I was actually in California. Yeah. I mean, or do I? I don't know. I think everything's shut down, isn't it? So yeah, everything except the beach and hiking. So I think you would do just fine here, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah beach doing. yoga and stuff is still like a thing here. Yeah, good. good. Yeah. yeah. I think you would thrive fresh air so so don't you have a you actually have what the the you have a fitness studio or you had a yoga studio and you have like a fitness program tell us a little bit about what you got going on girl yeah so I opened a yoga studio actually in Canada I moved to Canada six years ago I don't know if you knew that I um, did yes yes yeah. So my husband's Canadian and um, I opened a yoga studio here um, and it's called Advanced to Wellness, but now I switched the name off. Well, I'll get there. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that and it's like, um, like a 3,500 square foot yoga studio. I custom designed it myself. Like I had she did. <laughs> bar, um, a bit like when you walk into the studio it had like a bar right there where you could order tea or get protein shakes and smoothies and you also check in for your class and it was hot yoga so I had um, one hot yoga room one cool yoga room and then just uh, two showers big full locker rooms um or two different bathrooms with two showers. So I had men's and women's. And um, so I did that for about three years. So I actually opened my yoga studio two months after giving birth to my um, second son. And I like, it had been in the works for so long that I was like, okay, I just have to roll this out. Like I'm doing it. I need to start getting classes. And I felt like with my first son, when I had Riley, um, I stayed home for probably like six months. And I think that just being a new mom and staying home, I kind of went into like more of like a, um, I don't want to say postpartum, but almost postpartum. I don't really remember because it's been so long, but uh -huh. um, I thought this pregnancy, I, I just want it to be more active and more like involved with people because I thought that that would probably keep me um, in a really good mental state. And I, it did, but opening a yoga studio <laughs> brand new, um, my sister and I actually, my sister flew in for my birth. And I she remember flew. that. Yeah. Yeah. And we did like a big, um, a big yoga clinic with like 200 people. So like every, um, it was one weekend and every day we had like, at like 60 new people. And so, um, that was pretty crazy. So I wouldn't recommend that. I would say probably like, don't open a big business and do like a big yoga clinic. Um, two months after giving birth. I don't even know if it was two months. It may have been six weeks. Like it was just way too soon. 
Um, but it was successful. And um, so anyway, my, my mother-in-law would come up and um, babysit at my yoga studio while I would like teach the classes. And then in between classes, I would breastfeed and um, get to hang out with my baby. So it gave me like a nice little break where I didn't feel like all I was good for was my milk. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was awesome. So anyway, I moved, um, after I did the amazing race, which was, it aired last year, but, um, it, um, but we filmed two years ago. So it actually didn't air for a year after we did it. Oh, wow. So when we were about, when we were going on that, I was kind of, we were transitioning um, from my yoga studio to me doing like online classes to kind of like prepare for leaving. And we, um, we actually owned our building, a 60,000 square foot building. And I just had built my yoga studio on top of where my husband ran his business. So we ended up selling our building, which was perfect because then I, um, I built another yoga studio and it was more like a that virtual was successful. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> so then I built my second yoga studio for drop method, which is what I'm doing now. Yeah. And so, yeah. So the drop method studio, I do have small classes, but it's mostly like virtual and live streaming. And so I moved into that venture when, like when I was on the amazing race, cause I was kind of like, I, you know, you've known me for a long time. And I, I always like to like, keep going. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't want to do the same thing for very long. I like to build it and see how it plays out. If it's successful, great. Like, and kind of like branch off of it. So I felt like it was a good next move for me because it gave me the opportunity to interact with my clients all around the world. And they didn't have to live stream directly into my yoga studio. So I could like do classes specifically toward them. Whereas when I was teaching at my, at advanced to wellness, I had a live stream, but it was kind of like wonky because they couldn't really ask questions because I was teaching a real class as well. So anyway, so then I started drop method where I also take products. Um, I work like as a facilitator um, for larger companies to sell products for them. So do that also. I know that's right, girl. But I've never known you to do something and you've not been successful at it. Like homegirl did hair. Bam, she was so good at busy all the time. Homegirl went on Big Brother. Bam, she went up to the top. Bam, homegirl went to Canada, got a yoga studio, went it all the way up. I mean, I've never seen you not do something. I mean, and I do want to share, I like we were younger when you did have Riley. And so... You know, I watched you go from being like a single working mom and you were like hustling hard. You did it. And like, I'm so proud of you today. You have no, I'm going to get about it because like, I know. Know, like where we started from and seeing you today, it's just really, really awesome. And so like, I just wanted to like, I'm going to get emotional because like, I just, I'm so proud of you. First of all, like, I really am. And just hearing like your yoga story and stuff, like I really, really am proud of you like emotional oh, I know well, that's super sweet and I appreciate it and I'm super proud of you as well and yeah it's definitely like I know people just see the success or like see like the outward yeah. and they don't realize like the struggle and the hard uh -huh. work and you know you know because you have like an inside um insight to my life and it's like it's not easy it's just like you just keep going and you kind of like yeah, you have to. And you just like find different um, outlets to make things work. And just, yeah, definitely. If, um, if people knew like very deep insight to struggles yeah. they've had, they, they would be um, probably like more, I, maybe one day I should go into it to give people more motivation because yeah, I've been right. through a lot of struggles and um, being a single mom, a single working mom. I at one point had three jobs that I was working. I, was I remember working. this. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you. Me to share, but I remember when Riley would sleep in the same bed with you because, like, 
all we could do, right? Yeah. So, it was just, it was a lot. And I just seeing like, you've literally taken the opportunities you were given and you just like took off with them and you didn't bat an eye, you didn't look back, you just kept going and like, look at you, day girl, living in Canada. You got like your yoga studios going. And I think that's really, really awesome. And you did amazing race and that's super dope. And you did all of this while being a mom and you got married in Canada. Like listen to everything you do. It's just like so fabulous. Like it's, it's a lot of hard work and this did not come easy to Alyssa. And this was all just not handed to her. And I'm back you up on that. That's- yeah, exactly. And I, and I went back to university and got my degree also graduated summa cum laude. <laughs> I mean, I did. I am a mom. So I, I feel like people can quit, right? Like, yes. and I don't say that to like, like, oh, I'm so awesome. Like, it's hard work. Like, I feel like I just didn't even know anything different because I've been working like that since I was 18. And so it's like, it was just like ingrained in me to just go, go, go. But yeah, I did. I got my bachelor's of science in um, exercise science. And sports <laughs> <laughs> love it so, um yeah and I did that when Riley was at school I dropped him off at school and I'd come home and I would do my classes do my homework for like eight hours straight so I could get it and all to work out too on top of that I remember you would bust your ass and him who all at the same time like I remember all of this I do yeah. I took like one hour off to go to the gym, like my 12 to one and I'd go home and shower and then get right back to it and do my school. I don't know how she does it. I just don't know how she does it. And that country voice she has, you know, I've just been like cooped up in my house long enough. I think I might have forgotten how to interact with humans maybe a little. I don't know. It's really locked down here. Like really, really locked down. Yeah. So are they not letting people go to restaurants or anything there? No, we haven't been able to do that for like a month. Like the last day that we found out they were going to shut the restaurants down, we went and brunched so hard. We like, we did not bat an eye at that, but they keep doing that. It'll like open up for three weeks and then they'll shut things down again. And then they won't tell you when they're going to open anything up. And then all of a sudden you'll start to see things opened up here and there. And you're like, going on yeah exactly you see like all of the east coast just like wide ass open like people partying no masks and i'm like where is the breakdown occurring here how do we have like the largest like outbreaks here but the east coast is just like wide open i'm so confused right now i I think it's like super scary that i feel like we can't really trust what's going on like i don't know i feel like it's just scary because it's like was this you don't know like was it just a random fluke that this happened like was I mean, it thrown? did somebody put this in the air like was it planned yeah like it's is just the scary. Government holding out on us I mean the whole thing is scary I think and I think like rushing vaccines is scary and then like wanting us to all take vaccines and like are we going to be able to travel without this is the are you a vaccinator or anti-vaccinator well I'm not anti-vaccinator because I have gotten both of my children most of the vaccines but I am a vaccine researcher and I absolutely I mean I've gone to school and I went to, I was in nursing school actually before I went into sports management. And I feel like I have like, and I did like that, um, the CNA training. I worked as a CNA because I had to for nursing. And I feel like, I mean, which does not qualify me for anything or to give any kind of medical advice. No. But my opinion, um, I research everything because I don't care what kind of doctor you are, what kind of rocket scientist you are, you're a human being and you make mistakes. Yeah. No human being is going to tell me what is best for my children. And uh, I've heard Moderna messes with your face fillers and I am just not here for that at all. Like I need my face fillers. And if I know. I'm just not going to not get those. So we're going to have to revisit that vaccination when y'all figure that out. Okay. 
Well, I heard also, like, I know if you guys were really thinking smart, you would say like, it's like the new Botox, you'll never age. Everyone be lined up to get that. Thank you, <laughs> Alyssa. I think you just cracked the code on getting people all vaccinated. I really think yeah, you Yeah, literally, like once we hear like, I don't know, it seems like it took 15 years off of my life. Like, I feel great, the best I've ever felt. I, I started losing eye wrinkles, no more crows to be like, yeah, that's what, that's how they need to sell it. Not like people are I losing their fillers. I would still be in line for that right now. I'd be like, yeah, um, absolutely. Um, where do I sign up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, we are putting botulism that. toxins in our body all the time that God knows what that's going to do. You so vaccine I don't know I don't know I don't even know when we're gonna be able to have it I'm just gonna let our frontliners get it first and then like the chill once everybody else gets it then I'll get it because I'm like a healthy human being I can fight off COVID well I do think that they I have another question for you I know we're yeah. talking about vaccines now we're gonna get your ass just chewed on online for this so speaking of that do you have like do you, do you get harassed by people? Do you have like, like people are mean to you in your DMs, on your comments? Do people like make Reddit threads about you? Like, do you oh, do how do you uh, deal? What's going on? Tell us what your big brother, what do you guys get? Amazing race, all y'all, what y'all getting on your side? They're so bad. Big brother is like, you have either like the best fandom or you have the worst and they can be cruel, like so cruel. Um, okay, so I'll tell you two different perspectives. So my season, I won America's Favorite House Guest. And not. <laughs> I was America's Favorite. I don't know if y'all know this about me. <laughs> I know. I don't know if you know this about me, but um, it's it's just the charm, the southern charm um, that everyone hates now. No, um, so I feel like okay. So winning America's favorite. Anyway, okay. So when I won America's favorite, I still got hate. Like pretty unbearable. Like, where, but I would just block them. So I like if somebody said one thing, like to start like a fight or like try to like say something douchey or I just would block them immediately and um I was like block and block and block it like all day every day and so I kind of like tuned it out when my sister was on her first season of Big Brother she was like the love to hate like she was like the one that um every, she had like a big personality and like yeah so people actually called my parents and like gave them death threats my parents and they had to like call the fbi and um yeah like people like somebody like stuck something in their mailbox that said like your daughter is a pig or something like that so that was like super scary. Well, it's almost like I would not want them to like me. That's like more offensive, right? Like if you like me, I'd be like, am I just getting trashy or like, <laughs> am I, are my standards going down? Like, I mean, honestly, sometimes I feel like that with certain people. I'm like, I, I almost like don't want you to like me because if you did, then I would That's feel like the best thing I think I've heard, I think I'm going to have to take that with me for now on because, man, the past, just like the past few weeks, I just felt like the walls have been closing in on me because people are just really, really mean. Like, I breathe wrong and there's a Reddit thread about me and there's like a hundred and something people just like going in on me. And I'm just like, all I did was just sit here on Instagram. I don't understand. Or like, they just like rip me apart. People like just send me like crazy 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 I've gotten threat death threats too from people and stuff and I just had to finally just like step away from it for the past few weeks because I'm like I don't know how to deal with this anymore these people like are crazy crazy they're so crazy I know and that's the thing like you just cannot I mean you just have to think like the people that are who would actually take the time to write something like that about a reality tv person but there are these people Beth like there are these people they're 
crazy. Right? So, I've never done that in my entire life. And exactly. So imagine the type of person that is doing that. And then it's like, okay, like, why would you care? I think I got to the point where I was like, if you're not paying my bills, if you're not in my family and you're not one of my close friends, I just actually don't care what you think or say about me because why you don't affect my life. Like you can't let them affect your life. They don't affect your life. Like, because somebody on Reddit said something about you, that's not going to make you and Jamie have break up or that's not going to make yeah. you not be able to buy your groceries or you know what it actually helps you buy your groceries so eat it up be like the more they talk about you the more you're benefiting like no press is bad press turn it into an advantage for you um a girl from my season of big brother she had like a super hard time her name's Erin Williams mm -hmm. it was Erin Grease like you look her story up she had like whew, like she probably still gets death threats she says she does um but she like built this she like didn't care at all like it did not I mean I'm sure it phased her but she didn't let the public see that it phased her and she built this YouTube channel and like people are obsessed with her like she has like the biggest following uh, like out of any of us and um they're like obsessed with her um people are like the queen told me to go buy this so i'm gonna buy it and and she has like really cute people that like follow her yeah how are you like a like have these different categories for people like yeah. there's like cute people that follow you and there's like not cute people that you don't want following you yeah so she yeah so I'm like you go girl you know like you gotta turn it around this is good information and great like positivity and I really appreciate that because yeah I, I'm really gonna take that statement with me though. Like, they're, like you don't want those kind of people to be like to like you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's like if they do like you, you're like, okay. yeah. What am I? Am I being like basic or am I being? Oh my god, my dad actually told me he was like, um, what did he say? He was like, oh my gosh, what did he say? Um, common, like, he, like, um sometimes like my dad was like Alyssa you're acting very common like a calm like a common like you don't I know exactly what you mean and that's fabulous and he needs to write that on a plaque and that's a meme that's a meme you're actually common I'm yeah. actually common. yeah yeah so like I mean and then I'm like, I got to thinking about, I'm like, yeah, like, I don't want to say what the crowd wants to hear because that's not like who I am. And if people don't like me for who I am, I don't want them to like me anyway, because eventually one day they're not going to like you anyway, when they find out who you really are. So it's like, you just have to be you own it. Like the best thing you can do is own it. Just own it. Be like, yeah, this is me. Good. I'm glad you don't like me. I wouldn't want somebody like you to like me because you're on a different level than me. Why would I expect somebody down here to understand my queen status? Like, why? That's why Alyssa is so freaking fabulous, guys. Like, no yeah. It really is too. Yeah. This is great. No, this is really great. Like super, super helpful. Wow. I'm so glad. This is why I really wanted to talk to you here soon, but I do want to give Alyssa, I want to give everyone your handle. So Alyssa, what is your handle for Instagram? Instagram is at Alyssa size at E L I S S E R C I S E. And Twitter is at Alyssa Riley S. So E L I S S R E I L L Y with an S. And then TikTok that I never use. But I, I'm like, I'm so bad at all social media, but you know. <laughs> um, TikTok, I'm at Alyssa Size also. So E L I S S E R C I S E. So you don't, I can't get into TikTok. I just can't do it. I'm I sorry can't even like figure out how to use it like I'm like how do you make the hair flip look like perfect like you flip over and you have makeup on I'm like I tried it for 15 minutes I'm like I actually don't have time for this like I just can't do it sometimes I'm like thinking about it in the mirror and I'm like 
I just want to get my makeup on. Like that's all I want to do right now. Okay. So, you know, um, well, Alyssa, thank you so, so, so much for talking to me today. This was actually really beautiful. We've cried, we've laughed, we've shared our success. Um, let's definitely do this again. And like, let's just call like off the phone, off the, like, you know, and like chit chat. Cause I really feel like you and I could really talk about a lot of awesome shit right now. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Well,